Let's understand what we have done so far. So far, we have done one sample Z test, T test, and P test. So in all these cases, we were drawing one sample from the population, and based on that, we were deciding about the population. Now coming to the next step, which is two sample tests. So let's understand these. In this group, we will be talking about two sample Z test, two sample T test, and in two sample T test also, we will be talking about two different cases. We will see when we reach there. And then we will be talking about paired T test, two sample proportions or two sample P test, and we will be looking at two sample standard deviation. So these five things we will be doing next. And then later on, we will talk about ANOVA, which is analysis of variance. Let's go step by step starting with two sample Z test now. So here we have our next test, which is two sample Z test. And what is the difference between one sample Z test and two sample Z test? We have already talked about that, but let's recall that once again. In one sample Z test, you have a population and from that population, you draw one sample. So let's draw here. This is your population, and from this population, you draw one sample. This sample has a mean of x bar, standard deviation of s, and your population has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. Now, based on this x bar and s, we want to judge about the population, whether the population mean has changed or not that we are deciding based on this x bar and s which are the sample statistic now what happens in two sample z test is now we are looking at two separate populations and we want to confirm whether both these population have same mean or not the example of this could be two separate towns from which you draw 100 people and you note down the salary of these 100 people and based on that you want to check whether the salary is the same in both cities or if there is any significant difference between the salary of two separate cities or another example could be just like the one which we have already used a number of time the perfume manufacturing company where we have a two separate machines and we want to check whether these two machines are producing the same type of mean. Is there any significant difference between the mean of these two machines? So that is something which we'll be taking as an example on the next slide. But let's understand the concept here. So the null hypothesis here is that mu1 is equal to mu2. And that means the mean volume filled by two machines is same or the if we take the example of population and the salary of those two cities we want to say as a null hypothesis that the salary of people in these two cities is same so that's our null hypothesis we can rewrite null hypothesis as mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero as well rather than saying mu1 is equal to mu2 that means the difference is not there the difference is zero the alternate hypothesis is that the means are not the same. And if you recollect what we did earlier when we calculated Z parameter was, we calculated Z is equal to X bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by square root of N. If you remember, this is what we did to calculate the Z value. Here also, when we are looking at two samples, we need to find out a Z value here as well. We will find out the Z value, which is the Z calculated, and then we will be comparing that with Z critical value, just like we have done in all other cases. But the difference lies is how do we calculate Z value? So instead of X bar minus mu, we were doing X bar minus mu because mu was the population mean, and we wanted to check whether the population mean has changed or not. Instead of that, here we will say X1 bar minus X2 bar. So here what we have is we have two samples. The sample one has mean of X1 bar and has a standard deviation of sigma one. And sample two 
has a mean of x2 bar and has a standard deviation of sigma 2. So this is our sample 1, sample 1 and this is sample 2. Now what we want to do in z test is compare these two samples. Here we want to confirm that the mean of these two populations from which these samples are drawn is same. So for that the z is calculated by x1 bar minus x2 bar which is the difference of the mean in these two samples and at the bottom instead of sigma divided by square root of n we are having this different thing which is sigma 1 square by n1 sigma 2 square by n2 and in sample 1 and sample 2 we have sample size of n1 and n2 we might not have the same sample size in both these samples to add or subtract a variance the formula here is sigma which is the overall variance sigma square is equal to sigma 1 if there are two separate groups two separate sigmas then sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square this formula is the background of this specific denominator and as you know that standard error is sigma divided by square root of n so what we do is we take a square root of this and divide by square root of n so what we do on the other side also we do the same thing here sigma 1 square sigma 2 square we add that we take the square root of that divided by square root of n and i can write this in a different way which could be sigma 1 square divided by n plus sigma 2 square divided by n if i put this square root on the top of everything so this is what we have done here n1 and n2 i have put because we have a separate sample size if we had the same sample size we would have put n it's not required but it's good to know why we have this specific term in the denominator sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 and the square root of whole thing so this is the formula which you will be using to find out the z value when you have two samples one more thing let's understand here what we were proving was that these two samples are coming from two populations and we wanted to prove that these two populations have the same mean we wanted to prove that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero for example let's say if we know that one machine is supposed to be having a different mean than another then mu1 minus mu2 will not be zero so this will have some value delta we will talk about this second example also here but let's understand that we are expecting these two machines to produce something with a different mean now if we want to check whether that difference of mean is the same or not we can put this thing here on the top and that's the only difference between the top formula and the bottom formula if these things seem a little bit confusing right now bear with me once we look at the example of both of these cases you will have a much better understanding of how to calculate z value this will be z calculated and then we will be comparing this with z critical let's go to the next slide and look at an example there so that's our first example in case of two sample z test we take the example of the same perfume manufacturing company where we are producing perfume bottles with 150 cc in each bottle what we do is we draw 100 samples from two different machines and we want to check whether there is any difference in these two machines or not whether both of these machines produce similar volume or not here if you remember in one sample z test we were comparing that with the overall 150 cc we were proving that a machine is producing 150 cc or not here what we are doing is we are comparing two machines and that's the reason we are doing two sample z test from machine one we pick 100 samples and that gives us a mean of 151.2 cc and we calculate the standard deviation for these 100 samples and that comes out to be 2.1 Similarly, for machine 2, the mean comes out to be 151.9 
and the standard deviation comes out to be 2.2 now we want to check with 95 percent confidence level whether these machines have difference in volume or not let's do this problem on the next slide so here we have all these values and let's put these values in this formula which is z is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by sigma 1 square by n1 sigma 2 square by n2 and the square root of that so how do we do z calculated so we calculate z calculated is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar which gives me 151.2 minus 151.9 so this gives me 0 0.7 so let me put it at the top 0 0.7 and that's what we have here now in the denominator we have square root of the first standard deviation which is 2.1 the square of that divided by n which is 100 because we took 100 samples in this case both the samples had 100 items so n1 and n2 both are 100 in this case this could be different also if we picked different number of pieces in these two samples plus sigma 2 was 2.2 .2 square divided by 100 so if you solve this denominator this will come out to be 0 0.304 so if you solve this full thing this will come out to be 2.30 so 2.30 is your z calculated now since you are doing this two tail test since you are looking at the difference in both the side you are doing two tail test and you are doing with 95 percent confidence level and we have talked already about that that the z critical in case of 95 percent confidence level two tail test will be 1.96 so if i draw my normal distribution curve here so in this normal distribution curve this is my zero and let me put z critical on both sides so this is my minus 1.96 and this is my plus 1.96 and these are my rejection areas now if i put my z calculated z calculated is minus 2.3 and this will be minus and it really doesn't matter in case of z test whether the plus or the minus because we are doing two tail test minus 2.3 would be somewhere in the rejection region so this is minus 2.3 with this we reject our null hypothesis once we reject our null hypothesis that means that there is statistical difference between these two machines these two machines produce different volumes in the bottle so earlier we did a two sample z test to prove that these two machines were producing the same volume and that was mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero now let's give a little bit of twist to this example here i know that my machine one has to produce 0.2 cc more than machine two this is something which i know and this is what i want to prove so what i want to prove is that even though machine one is producing 151.9 and machine two is producing 151.2 on the average when i took 100 samples but i know that machine one was supposed to produce 0.2 cc more so what i want to prove in my null hypothesis is that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0.2 and this i want to do with 95 percent confidence level so earlier what we did was mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero here i want to prove as a null hypothesis that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0.2 so what we will be doing is instead of this formula which we used earlier the only difference between this and the bottom formula is this second term at the top so here in this case we will be using this formula not the top one here at the top when we are calculating x1 bar minus x2 bar which was 151.9 minus 151.2 which was earlier 0.7 here in this case i will be taking out mu1 minus mu2 which is 0.2 out of this so here at the top i will have 0.5 instead of 0.7 so that's the only difference which is going to be here when i am calculating the z value let's calculate the z value for this example as well on the next slide so that's what i have done here at the top 
it's coming 0.5 instead of 0.7 as we have talked in the previous slide the denominator remains the same exactly what we did in the previous example and this gives me a z value of 2.3 once this gives me z value of 2.3, now I have to compare this with the z critical. Now, when I'm finding the z critical, if you remember earlier, we were looking at the difference. There's no difference in two machines. So now we want to prove this on one tail only. This mu1 minus mu2, we want to have this to be positive 0.2. So this becomes a one tail test. And for one tail test and 95% confidence, this gives us the Z value of Z critical value of 1.64. So if I draw my normal distribution curve, in normal distribution curve, this is my zero. This is my Z critical, Z critical, which gives me 5% area on the right only. And this gives me the Z critical value of 1.64. And my Z calculated is coming out to be 2.3 which is on the right which is somewhere here so z is coming out to be 2.3 so this is falling in the rejection region so here also we reject the null hypothesis we reject the null hypothesis means that the volume difference is more than 0.2 volume difference is not just 0.2 it's more than 0.2 so this was our second example of two sample z test 